All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to yet another has been hotel rant. Uh, today, I would like to talk to you all about something I think is actually very prominent in the uh, commentary channels that I see and and the people who make videos about has been hotel. A lot of people. Uh, are really annoying about this. I'm not I'm not going to sugarcoat this at all. You people are annoying. Please. It's not that big of a deal. It doesn't affect your life personally. It doesn't matter and it shouldn't matter, but everyone makes it into a big deal wishing death on other people about something as simple as a fictional character's actions. And this brings me into the main point of this video. We need to talk about Angel Dust. I hate you all. Not really. Not at all, actually. I, I love a lot of you. I'm saying, those of you who constantly, just all of the time, Oh, Angel Dust is this poor, precious, sweet little baby. He didn't deserve that. Blah, blah, blah. Anybody who likes Valentino should die. It's, what the fuck is wrong with you, genuinely? Like, okay, I get not liking a character, but wishing death on other people because of their choice of fictional character is fucking stupid. I don't- I'm not sugarcoating any of this. I'm sick of sugarcoating shit. I'm gonna put it out blank. I hate it when people just- Oh my gosh, there was a gap there. I hate it when people just pick one side and then glue to that fucking side. I don't like Valentino's actions either, okay? Don't get me wrong, I don't think anyone deserves what happens to Angel Dust. No one deserves that, okay? But you guys all saying, oh, Valentino's such a monster for taking advantage of him. Not at all. And everyone calling Valentino a rapist? Please, fuck off with that. I'm not here to listen to that, okay? Everyone I've ever seen, like any comment section I go into that has even the smallest amount of Valentino mentioned anywhere it's it's constant it's oh he's he's a rapist he sexually assaults people like i'm sorry i'm kind of sick of hearing that because guess what he doesn't we've never seen him do that and i know what you're saying uh he literally did it in poison no he didn't because you know what happens when you sign your soul away do you know what that means do you know what it means to sign your fucking soul away it means you don't get rights anymore. It means that you consent to anything and everything that comes after the signature. You don't give your soul away. Okay, this is like, you see it in Supernatural. Okay, I know a lot of you motherfuckers out there have seen and love Supernatural. Okay, bitch, me too. I love that show with a lot of my being. But, but how the hell does a community of people who watch Supernatural religiously, who've seen it a million times, who absolutely love the idea of, oh, heaven and hell, hell is this great place, heaven sucks. Like, how do you people not realize that selling your soul means you have sold everything? You, you don't get to keep your consent. You don't get to keep that. You sold your soul. You signed it away. You don't get anything anymore, you get nothing. Angel Dust did that knowingly. We've seen how Valentino treats other people, okay? To be fair, he does try and seduce a lot of people, but even in the scenes where he is a background character, he's not sexually assaulting anyone. The only time we've seen him come close to sexually assaulting anybody is when he licks Charlie's arm. And at first it's like, okay, that's kind of weird. Uh, cause she said no thank you. And like, I mean, he did stop after she said no. Like, did he not? He stopped, right? And uh, like at first glance, it does kind of seem like that's just his way of greeting people. <laughs> but we all know, we all know the pheromones, we all know. I wouldn't even say that sexual soul, honestly. Like when you're in hell, the rules of what is and isn't just becomes so skewered that it doesn't even matter. The, uh, 
whatever, that's not the point. The point is that everyone's saying, oh, he abuses and rapes Angel Dust. Those people are idiots. I'm sorry, but it's true. He doesn't. Angel Dust signed himself away. That much is beyond obvious. You don't get to keep anything when you sign yourself away. You give up your time, you give up your money, you give up your life, you give up literally anything that you had. You give that up. Everything. Your family, your friends. When your soul is gone, you are gone. You are nothing. And that's the whole point of the song Poison, is it not? Angel sings the song Poison because he's coming to terms with the fact that he made a stupid deal giving away his soul. And I have said this, giving away your soul means you become nothing. Angel is coming to terms with being nothing. Like, okay, good on you, you know? Hell yeah, you are coming to terms with an idiotic choice that you made. And so people saying, oh, Valentino probably assaulted him or something like that, like, no. When he goes for a soul, he clearly does not attempt to assault people. Like, we've seen it in, what what episode was it? You know, the episode where Serpentius got brutalized by multiple people? What, what episode? Was that seven? Maybe that was six. I don't remember. But... The hypocrisy of that episode goes, it's its insane. You all want to bitch and moan about Valentino raping people when he, you know, has sex with people who've previously consented in their soul contracts, yet you all turn a blind eye when Serpentius is crabbed non-consensually and forced into a room called Sex Room 3 or something like that. Like. What the fuck is wrong with you people, genuinely? And that's supposed to be a joke? Oh, but Angel Dust is the victim. Okay, what? Stop. Angel Dust is not a victim. He asked for it. He said, I will give you my soul. I will give you my life. Do with it whatever the fuck you want to do with it. I'm yours. That's literally what he says in the song. Like, pretty much. Actually, not literally, but you know what I mean. He says it. He sings those lyrics. He told Valentino that when he gave up his soul. So anytime I see people who are like, Oh, Angel Dust is this poor sweetie. Like, no, he killed people. He probably also raped people in his life. He was a mafia boss. For fuck's sake, he sold and did drugs. He has so much blood on his hands. It's unbelievable. When you are mafia, that's just what it is. It's just, that's all it is. It's blood on your hands. It's drugs in your body. And yeah, that's a silly way to put it, but it's true. Angel Dust is not a saint. And like Charlie sings, it's going to take some time to get through those sins. I don't think Angel Dust can be redeemed. Okay, if Valentino can't be redeemed in your guys' eyes, neither can Angel Dust. Because Angel Dust has likely done a lot of the same shit. My argument here is Angel has likely done everything that Valentino has done, but on a much smaller scale. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm 90% sure that they're both horrible, evil people. Right? Okay, they still have emotions, yeah. That doesn't make them less evil. What the fuck? At least Valentino's upfront about being evil. And Cherry Bomb, don't get me started on Cherry Bomb. God, fuck Angel Dust. He's such a cool character, okay? He's, he's probably the most in-depth character in the entire series, which is cool, you know? It's always good to have a really in-depth character. Um, you know. I think it's awesome. I like what he and Husk have. I hope to see more of that kind of student-mentor relationship that they have. Like, father-son, almost, I feel. Um, I kind of want to see more of that, you know? I don't want... I don't particularly want them to be in love. I don't want Cherry Bomb to be his love interest either. I feel like that would be really unfair to Angel Dust and his character and who he is. I want... Uh, I want to see Angel Dust happy, that's for sure. 
but I don't think putting him in a relationship with Husk is the way to go about that. Um, and there's no way that you can unsign a soul contract. So unless, say, Lilith has the ability to manipulate soul contracts and force people to cut ties, and Charlie convinces her mom to save her friend, which would be really fucking convoluted, by the way, Angel Dust is probably stuck with Valentino. And knowing what we know about sinners, they can rebuild themselves, even if they get torn apart. We we see Velvet talking about it in episode two? I think it's two. I'm not fully sure. But sinners can literally put themselves back together after being torn shred by shred. So if Valentino does technically die... He can just pull himself back together again. Especially, and I believe, this is my opinion, if he has a contract with Vox. If he works under Vox, or has some kind of double contract with him, where they own each other's souls as business partners, like as equals, then... Do you know where I'm going with this? Like, they could literally be the most powerful overlords in hell. Back to Angel Dust. Angel Dust... I don't think Angel Dust is a character worthy of my time, personally, right now. You know, in, in the show right now. Later. Oh yeah, definitely. I can see him being a very lovable and fun character. Um, but right now, as he is, there's not enough there to make me feel for him. Like... All of these scenes that are so dark and, oh my god, he's getting assaulted, he's hurt, he's singing about how much he hates his life, how depressed he is, all of this, all of that, yet he consented to all of it. And that's why he sings the song. He sings Poison because he's attempting to come to terms with the idiotic decisions he made probably decades ago. Like, oh wow selling your soul is a bad idea i wonder <laughs> i wonder why right like i said you give up your freedoms when you sell your soul i think my favorite angel dust song is loser baby and a lot of people can agree with me on this one i feel like even if you don't agree with everything i'm saying you can agree that loser baby is probably angel dust's best song or like is angel dust's best song um, because not only is it, you know, Keith coming in with that feel better about yourself tune, but the, the message that it gives, oh yeah, I fucked up in the past and I'm coming to terms with my mistakes and I will be a better person and not make those same mistakes again. That's the message it's portraying, and so many people have missed that completely. Have just completely missed it. They think- they're, they're thinking too much into that victim mindset to realize just how glorious Loser Baby actually is. They're like, oh yeah, it's a good tune, it's one of my favorite songs, it's so sweet, I ship them, blah blah blah, whatever. That's not the point. The point of the song is to show how Angel Dust is 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 um how do i put this he is accepting that he has made mistakes and that he is also accepting that his friend or friends will be there for him no matter what other mistakes he may or may not make and it's a really good tune. It has a really good message. And not a lot of people seem to realize that. Because in real life, we have all made mistakes. All of us. I've made mistakes. You've made mistakes. Adam has apparently never made a mistake. He's fucking perfect, I guess. But we all have. We've all done something we're ashamed of. 
we've all done something we're not proud of. We've all done something that we'll look back and say, ugh, I really did that? Was that really me? And yeah, it was. It was really you. And sometimes we just have to accept that our past selves were not as mature as our current selves and accept that we're all just losers, right? That's the whole point of the song, was it not? Yeah, I just... I feel a lot of people miss the point. Another reason a lot of people have missed the point is because they're not mature enough to understand the point in the first place, to the level that most people would be able- like, most grown people would be able to. And this is not a jab at anyone's level of maturity or anything like that. I'm saying, in the- the Vivzy Pop universe, <laughs> a lot of the people who love her content are minors, or are kids, you know? And I'm still, you know, a teenager, technically. I'm an adult, but I'm still technically a teenager. I, I'm still making stupid decisions day by day. I could give you a play-by-play -play of today's dumbest fucking decisions. I could. And I could own up to all of the mistakes that I've made today. The first mistake was sleeping in a little bit extra than what my alarm wanted me to. I slept in like 20 extra minutes because I've, I've, I've stayed up way too late. There's another mistake, I stayed up way too late. My alarm went off at 7 a.m. and... Oh fuck, I'm too tired. 20 more minutes. Oh, 10 more minutes, right? We all make mistakes. That was a mistake on my end. It was a stupid mistake, but it was still a mistake, you know? And I regret... <laughs> having slept in. Because I had a shitty day at work because of it. And yeah, that does... Happen. Occasionally. But we just, we all have to, you know, accept that, well, the choices I made in the past caused my current self to be in a state where everything fucking sucks, and I hate it here. That's, that's, that's it. I'm a loser. There's, there's a couple of mistakes that I've made just, just earlier today, earlier this morning, you know? And, uh, it's okay to make mistakes. What What's not okay is to invalidate someone else's growth by saying that they're a victim. <laughs> I hate you all. Oh my god. He isn't a victim. He's a survivor. He is someone who has is currently overcoming some of the darkest shit that could possibly happen to a person some of the darkest shit imaginable and everyone's oh he's such a victim no he isn't stop calling him that he's not he signed his soul away he has to deal with the consequences and he is incredibly brave for it i wouldn't be able to do that i'd probably just like stand at the ledge during extermination day with my arms open for the angels okay like because we all know the only way to kill a sinner is with an angelic weapon apparently i don't know there's a lot of continuity in the show that makes no sense but you could just do that you could just wait for extermination day you could just commit on extermination day and be perfectly fine. Just turn into one of those little eyeball things forever. You don't have to put up with the torture. You probably don't have a brain anymore. You're just chilling. Happy as can be. A stupid, unconscious eyeball in somebody's couch. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dude. You know? But he doesn't do that. Because you know what? He's not a victim. He doesn't kill himself because he's a survivor. And there's a big fucking difference. And this is coming from someone who has experience in a very similar situation to Angel Dust. I'm not gonna go into detail because this video is not about me, okay? It's about Angel Dust and the way you people are treating a, a literal survivor of 
his own damn decisions. <laughs> Why are we treating him like a baby? That's another question of mine. Do we really need to invalidate someone else's experiences enough to treat him like a fucking child? Is that what we're doing these days? Oh man. Dear God. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this. Oh, nobody's gonna listen to the video. They're gonna hear my first opinion. They're gonna say, this woman is an idiot. She's a fucking dumbass. She should go die because she likes Valentino. Like, alright. What? For starters, he is fictional. These crimes never happened in real life with these characters. Maybe some real people did them. Definitely some real people have done these crimes. But these characters in this universe that we are talking about here and now, they're fake. They're not real. They're not made up in your head, but they're certainly not real. So defending one of these characters, life and death, is ridiculous. And that's why we need to talk about this. Because defending him isn't going to give you internet points. Other people might be like, oh my gosh, he's so brave. Oh my gosh. He's such a victim. Shut up, please. On behalf of everyone, shut up. We get it, okay? We all saw the video. We all saw the music video. We all saw the episode. It's annoying. It's just getting annoying. I can't, I can't help myself. I see people wishing death on actual, real, living people. I've gotten DMs. I've gotten kicked from group chats. I've gotten kicked from the Amino. I've gotten kicked from basically fucking everywhere because of my opinion on this. It's an opinion about a fictional character. If, if we're gonna go as far as to defend this shit with our lives, I'm gonna play your game, you know what? That's fine, I can play by your rules. If we're defending, if we're defending with our lives, here's a defense for you. Angel Dust isn't a victim. Stop calling him that, it's annoying. It's really annoying. He is not a victim. You know who is a victim though? A victim that is possibly the coolest and most underrated character in the show. A victim who no one ever seems to talk about the crimes committed against. Vaggy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Vaggy. No, seriously. She got kicked from heaven for sparing a child. What? And heaven is perfect. Heaven is heaven is your hell yeah. That is double thumbs up right there. Heaven is your place to be if you're a good person. And Vaggy was a good person. She was, but she still got kicked from heaven. Not only that, she got brutalized. Not in the same way Angel Dust did. You know. But but it's still a violent attack. And no one talks about it. Why does no one talk about it? Is it because it's easier to not talk about it? Is it because... It would invalidate any arguments, maybe, perhaps? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what arguments it would be invalidating. I'm just suggesting that there are some arguments I've heard that could be invalidated by Vaggy's entire existence. I love Vaggy. okay? She's a very highly relatable character. She's a queen. She's our anger issue, Dommy Mommy. We love her. And we do love Angel Dust, okay? But Angel Dust is a bad person who's had bad things happen to him. And that happens. That's just life. That's what it is. He signed his soul away. He gets no rights. He gets no values. He's a slave anytime Valentino needs him to be. Because his work hours are not stated anywhere. And at any given point in the show, he'll just occasionally be like, Oh, Valentino needs me in the studio. That means his work hours are non-specified. So if Valentino wanted him to, he could just be a 24-7 slave. He, like, the contract, we don't know what the contract states specifically. But we know that the contract says something along the lines of outside of work. You get free time. You get to be free. You don't get abuse. 
you get a little bit of freedom. And that's, that's way, way more lenient than a lot of, of other things that could be happening. You don't realize how lenient it is because you people need everything shoved in your face to know whether it's right or wrong. It's really annoying. Okay, it's lenient. There are people in real life who do not get that lenience. There are people suffering every day, 24 seven, seven days a week. And y'all are worried about someone else on the internet liking a fictional character to the point where you will give death threats and dox them over it? Am I the crazy one for thinking that doxing someone else over their opinion on a fictional matter is kind of fucking ridiculous? Has anyone else thought of that maybe? That that might just be a little stupid, or maybe a lot stupid, or extremely stupid, like unbelievably stupid. Drink every time I say stupid. This is stupid, and it pisses me off. We're defending a fictional character to the death, saying. Other people who like this other fictional character who committed a fictional crime against said fictional character is, is, is somehow a bigger sin than actually killing someone or actually hurting someone. I'm gonna keep that in mind. This is why I don't go on Twitter, okay? This is why I don't... But I, I still can't avoid it. I still cannot avoid it. Even on, on YouTube Shorts... Oh god, don't get me started on the fucking YouTube Shorts. Even on the YouTube Shorts, even on the YouTube videos I see of Hell, Hell of a Boss, Has Been Hotel, anytime Osmodius, Valentino, or Angel Dust is at all mentioned, even the slightest mention, it is war in the fucking comment section. It's not funny. No one should care about this, but... Obviously they do. So here I am making a rant about it because it pisses me off, you know? Why should I have to bend a knee to people who want to see me actually die <laughs> because of my opinion on a character that they they care way too much about? Like, I'm, is it just me or do these people care way too much about a fictional character? I get it. You can relate to him. Okay. I get it. I do. Trust me. But seriously. We have got to chillax. He's not real. He isn't real. None of them are. He sold his soul. End of story. It doesn't matter. Nothing nothing that comes after that signature matters because he does not exist outside or like inside his job it doesn't matter he isn't a person in his job that's the contract it states that he is a, literally a slave Whenever he's on the job, for porn, for sex, for whatever Valentino wants, and it can't be classified as assault or rape because it's consensual. Do you know what a signature is? I'm sure a lot of you don't. A lot of you probably haven't, you know, figured out that signatures are legally binding yet, but especially when you're dealing in souls, signatures are binding forever. It literally lasts forever. It doesn't matter who dies, when, or where. It lasts forever. When you consent once in that one signature, you consent a million, billion, trillion, gazillion, quadrillion, gazillion, fucking whatever the fuck else times. You consent forever. When you sign that contract, your soul is mine? You consent forever. It doesn't matter anymore. You've given up your life. You've given up your rights. You've given everything up. For what? For fame? For money? 
And yeah, like looking from an outside perspective, it seems stupid to want that kind of shit. But in the moment, a lot of people get wrapped up. We have songs that literally like tell stories and like warn us about this shit. Say The Pianist by Madame Macabre. We have fucking Devil's Train by Lab Rats. Like we have media that warns you when you sell your soul, it's gone forever. It doesn't matter anymore. Even in Supernatural. I mentioned this earlier, but I know a lot of people who love has been are also Supernatural fans. I don't know why. It's just something I see on Twitter. It's something I see on AO3. It's something I've noticed. A lot of people like Supernatural. And even in Supernatural, when you sell your soul, game end, dude. Your soul's gone for good. Except for you know, in that one really convoluted season, what was it, like season six or seven, where, like, literally, I don't know what the writers were on, they were on crack or something, I don't know. It's been a while since I watched it, but your soul is gone, essentially. Your soul does not belong to you. It's not yours. It doesn't exist. And that's how it is in literally every theology that's ever been written. Uh, Christianity, Catholicism, um... Like, if, you re if you've read the Torah, if you've read... I'm trying to... The Quran, if you've read any of those, when you give up your soul, it's gone. It's just gone. Like, I could whip out the Bible right now, but I'm playing a game, and I kind of don't want to whip out the Bible right now, you know what I'm saying? Demons don't love you. They don't. And Valentino, and Vox, and Velvet... And Alistair, and Husk, and Mimsy, and Angel Dust, even Angel Dust, he's prime example as well. He is. They don't care about you. They don't care about you. The second they get your soul, you are nothing to them. You are less than a slave. Because that's just how it is in hell. It's not supposed to be fun. Literally, one of the first... <laughs> Why did I do that? One of the first, like, off-putting lines that we get in Season 1, Episode 1, probably Minute 1, not not Minute 1, but, like, real early in the, in the season. I think it's the first song sung, actually. Um, yeah, it is. There's literally two demons one of which is sitting on the other's head and he sings a line about <laughs> now I'm gonna use your terms here since we're playing your game sexual assault that's what he sings the line about I have a bunch of barbed wire to shove in his hole and it, it, he's clearly not happy about that you don't see a smile on his face he's not he's a slave because he sold his soul to someone he couldn't trust you can't trust anyone in hell why would you want to they're all sinners you're all sinners in hell no one can trust anyone that's the reason why it's so chaotic all the time so Angel Dust, not Valentino, Angel Dust giving his soul to Valentino is just another example of that happening. It's funny until it isn't. And you guys have decided when it is and when it isn't, and that is not fair. That first, that line about what you would consider sexual assault, it's not sexual assault. It isn't. He gave his soul away. And now he gets to be abused. That's what it is. It's abuse. It's not assault. It's not rape. It's abuse. Um, he gets to be abused for the rest of his existence in hell because that's what he fucking signed up for. That's what you sign up for when you sign your soul away. It doesn't matter how nice the contract looks. It doesn't matter what riches you get. You sign yourself to physical, mental, verbal, all of it. Every form of abuse that has ever existed will be inflicted on you forever. In Velvet's case, I'm going to use Velvet as an example here because I quite like Velvet. I think the V's are interesting villains. They're 
like kind of realistic i'm not gonna lie when it comes to businessmen practices stuff like that like they're a little they're a little more realistic than anyone might think and i kind of like that about a villain i don't like all my villains to be super cartoonish like stella or striker it's really annoying i hate cartoonish villains like unless they're done right i don't know there's like one cartoonish villain i like anyway that's not the point the point is that even velvet abuses her employees they don't get days off like angel dust does angel dust is <laughs> valentino's words fucking lucky he is he is extremely lucky to even have a day off to even have 10 minutes off to even get one break lucky and you're probably like oh that's not the word i would use yes it is because hell is not the same as earth they're different they're completely different completely different universes completely fucking different in on earth when you make a deal with somebody like you go to a lawyer and you say for example i want to make this business deal i get 10 percent of anything that he gets from this specific product okay let's take that as an example that's going to be our example once you sign that and now all of a sudden you're like hmm, i want 20 percent you can't just opt out of signing the first time you can't just say oh i want to sign out of that right you have to go back to the you well first you go to the the business partner that you signed with in the first place and you say hey I kind of want 20% now because I see how much this is making and I don't feel like I'm getting paid enough for my invention. And now it's up to the business partner to say yes or no. That's not your choice because you signed the contract already stating you wanted 10%. So if the businessman says no on earth, you would go to a lawyer, you would say, I want to opt out of this contract and I want to, I want to take back everything I said. And like, I'm no legal expert, so please, I'm begging you to correct me on this. A lot of the times, they'll be like, no, you don't get to just opt out of that. That's a legally binding contract. The only way you can opt out of that is with a lot of time, months of, of persuasion, or maybe making the deal a little sweeter so you don't have to be involved with the practice anymore. Like... I don't I don't fully know the extent of it, okay? I'm not I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. But it doesn't matter because you don't get to opt out of that anymore. You don't get to just change it. You don't get to move it around willy-nilly. You don't get to say, "Oh, well, I signed for 10%, but now I want 30." You don't get to do that. It's a legally binding contract. And in hell, when things are legally bound, aka a soul contract, you do not get to opt out of that ever especially if it states for all time in the contract you don't get to buy you don't you simply do not get to opt out of that and this isn't me saying oh you guys are just horrible people and i hate or not hate because obviously you guys are fucking annoying when you get on my nerves about this kind of thing but i'm not saying go die i'm not saying hurt yourself i'm saying stop being annoying about it take a step back take a breath look at the truth and then make your own opinion instead of sitting in an echo chamber of twitter artists who just want to draw their fancy femboy porn okay and that's what it is because he's you know he's a drag queen he's a femboy he's a feminine man we love him for that okay but dear god stop sitting in an echo chamber make your own opinions look at the truth look at what happened say yeah he signed his soul away and he is growing past that he is showing everyone that he is better than a simple contract that he regrets signing he is better than valentino he's showing everybody he is showing everyone that yeah he's a loser sure whatever but he's the coolest loser in town baby and that's not gonna fucking stop him and anytime soon he even, he even stuck it to Valentino in episode 7. That was so cool. You know, sticking it to your boss who's also a bully. I love that for him. Right? And like, I can praise Angel Dust all day. There's a lot of good things about this character that I love. But the, the main point here isn't that, oh, Angel Dust is the, 
the problem, it's the people who are constantly defending someone that they don't really seem to give a rat's ass about. And it's frustrating. Because there's clearly motivation for defending this character that is, is hidden behind hatred. I don't, I don't know about you, but I feel like um, these people who defend Angel Dust hyper-religiously only do it because they don't like Valentino. It's okay to not like a fictional character, okay? I never said it's not okay to. It's, it's perfectly fine to dislike a character or a person. You know, you're allowed to hate people. I'm not saying you're not allowed to hate people. I'm saying, like, don't die on a hill that's completely idiotic just because you don't like somebody else. You never see people doing that in real life. Nobody does that in real life. No one dies on hills that are stupid just because they want to spite someone else unless they're an idiot. You don't want to be an idiot, right? No one wants to be an idiot. Don't be that guy. Don't die on a hill. Especially on a hill for a fictional fucking character. That doesn't matter in the end of the day. Has no effect on you and your personal life. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It really is. And it, it clearly it's frustrating. Because, uh, even I'm getting heated about this. The actions are fictional, but the annoyance is real. It's, it's my reason for hating Mimsy so much. I don't care what fictional character did what. Mimsy annoyed me when I came to be entertained. I fucking hate her for it. I don't, I don't care if you like Mimsy. That's fine. You're allowed to like Mimsy. I never said you couldn't like Mimsy. No one ever said that you couldn't like Mimsy, but people are saying that you're not allowed to like Valentino. <sighs> and this is why I don't like a lot of the fucking people in this community, is because they are extremely hypocritical. They are so unbelievably hypocritical that it, it, it circles all the way back to being so stupid it loses my brain cells constantly. They're dying. I can feel them in my skull dying as we speak well as i speak and i'm so heated about this i should have been in, in bed look at that another mistake that i'm currently making right now it's 11 24 p.m at night i should have been in bed one hour and a half ago sleeping but instead i'm here because you guys are annoying me and i want to get this off my chest you know and i love the content creators for husband hotel like for the most part some of them are really fucking annoying. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna name any names, but every single time I scroll through YouTube shorts and I get a, did you know this in Hasbin Hotel? Followed by a fucking theory that has little to no standing in the show whatsoever and is, it, it, it feels like the person who's narrating is just projecting what they want onto these characters. It's really annoying, okay? I, I'm, I, get I get annoyed by those. And you probably do too. I mean, I don't know you, but I get annoyed by those personally. They're really fucking annoying every time. Did you know this in Husband Hotel? Charlie's mom not, might not even be Lilith. Shut up. Oh my god, shut up. That's not even a did you know. A did you know is a fucking question followed by a fact. Did you know that spiders shed their skin? There's a fucking did you know for ya. That's a real thing. Spiders do that. They shed. They wiggle. And they, they, what is it? I think it's called atrophying. I could be wrong. Correct me. Again, correct me. Please correct me. Correct me if I'm wrong. But they will, like, atrophy their joints and shake around a lot like they're seizing up to get their skin off of their bodies. It's really gross. <laughs> but spiders do that. That's a did you know fact. Another did you know fact is... Um... Moths will often intimidate other species. No, not intimidate. Imitate other species to intimidate other species. So they'll they'll imitate butterflies, for example, to keep snakes away. 
there's a fun fact. I'm pretty sure that's a fact. It's something I read in a National Geographic years ago. Um, what else is a fun fact? Fun fact! I own way too many books. There's a fun fact for you. Do you know what a fun fact isn't? A fun fact is not... Did you know that I might have six kids in my basement? I'm joking. Of course, I don't have a basement. There's no basement in my house. I live in a fucking trailer. That would be a did you know. That's not a real did you know. Did you know? I'm sure you did. They're annoying. Anyway, back to Angel Dust. Oh my god. I just fucking hate those YouTube shorts so much. Like, please shut the fuck up. What I do like is that one creator, what's her name? I don't remember. But she draws those really pretty pictures of the characters and she talks about her experiences and thoughts watching the show. I love her. What's her name? Oh my god, I don't remember. I'll put her in the description if I can remember her name. But she's awesome. I love her shorts. I love her art. Um... But yeah, those did you know the channels, they just they just piss me off. They're so fucking annoying. Like, no, I didn't know this really obscure theory that no one really gives a shit about. Thank you for telling me absolutely nothing about the show. And sometimes sometimes they'll trick you out. They'll be like, so, no, did you know that Rosie is a cannibal? And I'll be like, huh, oh, I didn't know that. You know, that's just an example, obviously. I know Rosie's a cannibal. But sometimes they'll do that and they'll give you a real did you know, but half the time it's just them raving about some obscure theory that no one gives a shit about. It's kind of annoying, I won't lie. Okay, back to Angel Dust. Oh my god, I get distracted so easily. I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry, I apologize. Huh. Back to Angel Dust, back to Angel Dust. I think I've covered like pretty much everything that I've wanted to say. Like, okay, let's go over the bases. Stop defending him with your life. Okay, check. Stop pretending like he's not the one at fault here. Okay, check. Stop pretending like he's a rape victim. Okay, check. Because rape is a legal thing. Okay, I don't know if you know this, but it is a legal term for an offense that... Uh, what is the definition? It's, it's sexual assault, right? Penetrative sexual assault. That's what it is. But that's not what happens because it's consensual. So non-consensual penetrative sexual assault. Too bad it's consensual, you know? Because if it wasn't, I wouldn't have said anything. I would be on your side. If Angel Dust never signed his soul away, I would be 110% on your side. I'd say, um, yeah, Valentino's a rapist. He's not. Because he gets consent from people. He did... I, I'm like I said earlier, the closest thing he's come to sexual assault that we've seen is uh, licking Charlie's arm, which, you know, isn't as bad of a crime as literally ripping someone apart and eating their brains on the sidewalk. Uh, that's just me. That's just me. You know, maybe you have less of a moral compass than I do, but. I'm joking, of course. I, I feel like, I still feel, personally, that eating someone and beating them to death on the street and eating their corpse is way worse than licking someone's arm. Hello? Like, hate whoever you want all you want. Like, can we talk about that? Like, that's kind of fucked up and weird. Because you would expect how nice the people are in Cannibal Town to, like, have this consent system. Where, oh, I'll eat your dick if you eat my foot. Or some shit like that. You know, like, consensual cannibalism. We've all heard of it. We've all seen it. Unless you haven't, then lucky you. But, it's, it's... I, I, I don't know. I feel like non-consensually ripping somebody apart, beating them to death, and eating them while they're trying to pull themselves back together as a sinner is a... A little bit worse than licking someone's hand. I don't know. There were weirder times in, in real earth life. <laughs> where people did much weirder to greet each other. <laughs> That's... I, I'm not even going to get into that. <laughs> I'll be honest. But you know, whatever. It's... It's whatever. Another thing. I think this is going to be my last point. Maybe as this uh, golf game gets wrapped up. I know I suck at golf. I'm sorry for my piss-poor gameplay. 
but another thing if Valentino in the terms that I often hear is constantly raping his his workers wouldn't Angel Dust be doing the same thing? Because they're all under contract, right? And even if it's if, if you are held at gunpoint and told to rape someone, you're still raping that person, right? So Angel Dust, if by your own damn logic, Angel Dust is just as bad as Valentino because he rapes the other people that he works with, right? That's your logic, that's not my logic. I'm sorry, whose logic is crazier here? Did I get something wrong? Did I mix something up? Are my points all, all weird and crazy? Do you think... I, I actually genuinely do want to talk about this in the comments. If you think my points are stupid, feel free to call me stupid, but I would like to hear why you think that. And if, if you don't tell me, that's fine. Like, I've, I've had people... Like, not even- I really want to bring up that comment, but it's- it's so unrelated and stupid, but I've had people tell me shit, and then I'd be like, elaborate, and they'd just say no, and I'd be like, what? Why? And they just don't say anything after that, and it, it's like, okay, you know, weird flex, but alright, I got you. And it's fine, you know, people are going to dislike what they're going to dislike, and it doesn't matter. That specific example I'm talking about is a whole other rabbit hole. I would make a video on it, but it's like, who cares? It doesn't matter. Um, <sighs> but when, when people use this logic of signing your soul away means you are still free, then they clearly have no idea what hell is like. Especially the hell portrayed in has been and hell of a which is scary how do you not know what it's like after two seasons and multiple attempted webcomic series as well as hundreds i'm pretty sure live streams talking about these universes how do you not know what it's like especially at this point in the fandom all these hardcore fans oh poor angel dust he's my sweet baby dog he hates you he doesn't care about you the only people he cares about are the people who show care for him and have tried to be his friend. And since he's fictional, you can't do that. You can't try and be his friend. He's not real, newsflash. I'm sure you all knew that, I'm sure. Uh, hopefully you all knew that. It's like, it's like I just ruined somebody's Christmas by telling them Santa isn't real. Angel Dust isn't real, kiddos. He's not your friend. Like Jehovah, he's not real either. Okay, that was a bad jab. Was, I'm going to hell for that one. But <laughs> I'll always, I'll always take a chance to jab at Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't care. I jab at everybody that I can. Whenever I can, I'll do it. I don't fucking care, man. I'm sorry. Bad joke. Bad joke. Bad joke. R run it back. Run it back. Anyway. Um. Yeah. Angel Dust is not innocent. And if your argument is he's innocent because he was tricked into the contract you don't know that nobody knows that uh but when you sign a contract especially if we're going by basic hell rule like satan's bible type of stuff um or the satanist bible if any of you have ever read that it's quite an interesting read i would give it a read um i've read a lot of religious texts in my time the satanist bible is one of them uh making a deal with the devil is permanent it doesn't matter. It's permanent, and nothing you do will ever cleanse you of that. You can get baptized as many times as you want. It will never cleanse you of that. But, um... Yeah, if we're going by basic hell rule, you will never, ever, ever get out of that contract. And if, if the demon holding your contract dies, again, basic hell rule, the demon that was holding that demon's contract now owns your contract. So, as I was saying, if Valentino and Vox had duo contracts with each other, same with Velvet, if the 3Bs had contracts with each other to co-own the, the Vox Tech Empire, Vox would just own you next. Or Velvet. Oh god, Velvet would be... 
I don't think you guys realize how bad eating disorders really are. Okay, Velvet is the one person you don't want to have own your soul if that type of thing scares you. Because she will starve you. She doesn't care. She will force you to not eat for, for, for basically ever. She will make you a perfect supermodel for her own eyes. She probably won't even make you famous. She'll probably just torture you mentally, psychologically harm you, demand that you starve yourself like every other supermodel, everything ever. She will starve you. Vox? Oh my god. Dude, these people are horrible. They're cool characters. They're fun villains. I, I like a lot of them, you know? I like a lot of the characters. They're interesting. And uh, Hasbin Hotel is interesting to so many people because it's built off of little details and not big stories. And so people like the modern, you know, modern people, Twitter people, TikTok people, they can keep up with it because there's so many little details to pick apart here and there that it's like it's like ADHD central, you know? That's kind of why I like picking it apart. I don't like the overarching storyline. Um, there isn't really an overarching storyline, to be fair. But, um, excuse me. There's, uh, there are many storylines, and you could say, oh, the overarching storyline is that she wants to redeem sinners. Like, no, that is quite literally in her own show pushed aside for other storylines. It's true, it is. We learn more about Carmilla Carmine than we do, like... Nifty. Or Husk. I mean, we know something about Husk, but we know more about Carmilla, right? We know more about Alistair, technically. Actually, no we don't. Yeah, we do, kind of. Alistair's a stupid character. I don't- I don't like his character. I think he's funny when it comes to his personality, but I don't like, uh, the portrayal of, oh, this character is hyper-mysterious. That- that means, uh, all of his mystery goes out the window anytime he wants to be creepy. Like, that's not how you write a mysterious character. Anyway. Angel Dust happens to be the best written character in the show. And, uh, no one realizes it. They all say it, but they don't truly believe that. They don't truly realize it. You know? Realizing Angel Dust's worth in the series is knowing that he is not just some porn star victim. He is... What What does he say at the end of episode 4? There's more to me than just sex. Isn't that like kind of another huge thing about his character that everyone I see on TikTok and YouTube shorts just overlooks? People love him for the wrong reasons and it's annoying <laughs> why can't we like characters for who the characters are instead of these personifications of of humanoid projection yeah that's a lot of mumbo jumbo words i'll be honest but it's the best way i can describe it people just push their own like feelings onto him and they say, oh, this is what I think this character should be. No, he's not at all a victim. I can't stress that enough. I hate it when people say that shit. Like, I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll go crazy if people keep saying that shit to me. He's not. And anyone who says that in my comments, please elaborate why. He's not. He's signed his soul away. And he literally has a full episode, two episodes pretty much, with plot lines that go through this heart-wrenching story about someone who made bad decisions and wants to be redeemed. And eventually, like, does genuinely want to be redeemed. Not just say that he wants redemption because that's what Charlie asks him to want. It's someone who genuinely now wants that because... He's seen the good in other people around him, aka Charlie and Baggy and Pentius and, you know, his friends. 
definitely Husk showing him that uh, with a bit of bravado God you can be whoever the fuck you want to be you don't have to be a fake version of yourself and people don't seem to realize that that's kind of the whole point of his character arc and it hurts because people see me with like an angel dust sticker or like an angel dust pin or like a cute little angel dust journal okay they'll see me with that i have i have a couple of pins for him and they'll immediately think oh she just sexualizes him or something like that you know oh she probably just likes him because she thinks that she's quirky and relating to him that's not true he's such a deep and valuable character and no one else realizes that it's frustrating especially from the standpoint of a writer um i do write i'm not very good at it i will admit i fucking suck at writing uh i can write stories and plots so damn well but when it comes to like actually putting the plots and stuff on paper womp womp you know i'm sure a lot of people have that problem they'll they'll sketch something that they think will look really great and then they'll just get discouraged and it ends up bad and then they judge themselves too critically and all of this and all that hey it happens to the best of us okay it really does but from a writer's perspective Angel Dust is made of so many little details that looking at the big picture in this occasion is just awful for for the character and who he is and how he acts. The whole point of the character is that he is a fake version of a really cool dude. And people don't seem to value that representation. I don't care about the characters sexual orientation or their job what they do what they've done in their past i care about how it's portrayed and if that representation is valuable to the story and makes sense within the overarching plot and that's not me being hypercritical that's just me saying that's what i value that's my opinion that's why i like dean winchester so much for instance because he's very valuable to the plot. That's why I like Sam. He's extremely valuable to the plot. And sure, they're the main characters. But the same could be said for Angel Dust. He's a main character. And he is so valuable to the plot that people don't even realize how valuable he actually is. Everyone's so, oh my god, if Osmodeus ever meets with Valentino, oh my god, Osmodeus is just gonna kill Valentino. It'll be so funny and cool. Haha, <laughs> I hate Valentino fans. I hope anyone who likes Valentino dies. What? What is wrong with you? Actually, what the fuck? That's some shit that I've seen people say. Okay, I've... You can go on YouTube Shorts if you don't believe me. You can look up Osmodeus. Um, nine times out of ten, opening that comment section, the top comment is gonna be something about Valentino meeting Osmodeus and Osmodeus killing Valentino. I don't know how people got that in their heads. Osmodeus is clearly not the type of guy to give a shit. He doesn't like it, okay? But as long as it's not happening in his bar, in his club, he doesn't care. Lust, lust ring is filled, I assure you. Lust ring is filled to the brim with the exact same shit Valentino does. Osmodeus doesn't go out of his way to go kill some random imps, okay? He doesn't. Because as long as it's not happening around him, it isn't his problem. I don't know how you guys missed this. I don't even really like Osmodeus, and I picked that up before 90% of Osmodeus fans did. Make it make sense? You know? I really need to go to bed. Yeah, people, people saying that Osmodeus is just gonna, like, kill Valentino are stupid. They're clearly projecting as well. Anyone who says Osmodeus is going to kill Valentino is projecting their own personal feelings towards Valentino onto a very innocent and wholesome character. What the fuck is wrong with you? Why can't characters just be nice? Like, seriously, what the fuck? Osmodeus is probably the sweetest character we've ever met aside from Charlie. 
and Vaggy. Like those those are top three wholesome characters right there. And you wanna just project onto one of them and make him the only male character out of those three, by the way, and and make him just evil and horrible? Sure, Valentino's evil and horrible, but don't make Osmodius that. I draw the line. I don't even fucking like this guy, okay? Like, that's how much y'all have me, like, tricked right now. I don't even like this kill character. I almost called him a killer. Dead by daylight. God. I don't- I don't- I don't care about him, okay? He wasn't my favorite. I liked his songs. I- I kinda liked what he and Fizz had. I thought it was kinda cute. It wasn't my favorite thing. You know, I- I would've liked to see Hell of a Boss actually follow the plotline that it sets up in episode 1. But, you know, we can't all have what we want. Osmodius is like the one character in that show who's actually a good person. Like, Moxie does some good things, but he's not a good person. Ultimately, he isn't. He loves his wife, sure. Millie, Millie loves her husband. They're still not good people, <laughs> okay? You don't willingly make or join a company that goes out of its way to kill people. That's not, that's not what good people do, okay? Osmodius does not do that. He literally... He's so polite with everyone. He's a hypocrite. Yes, I will. I will admit he's extremely hypocritical uh, in the first episode that we meet him. Um, but he is so polite to Moxie. Trying to give him, like... Examples of what actually goes on in the club instead of just kicking him out. And trying to, you know forcibly change him he, he nudges him in the direction that he wants for his club okay i respect it i respect it hard okay but everyone's saying oh ozzy's just gonna kill valentino you guys are fucking stupid am i crazy for this he wouldn't if if this if oh well he's just gonna kill valentino because valentino did bad things stolas did bad things blitz did bad things Probably every succubus in that fucking... <laughs> in the club has done bad things. Like, I assure you, succubi are not good people either. Succubi are literally known as, like, rape demons. Because that's what they do. That's literally their thing. You can look it up. It's on Wikipedia. But, yeah. Incubi and succubi. Not good people. He doesn't care. If he cared, he wouldn't have succubi in his lounge. Sure, they're like consenting succubi who only get consent first, but at the same time, that doesn't matter because the entire race of incubi and succubi are rape demons. That's literally what they are. You can't deny that. If if I get anybody denying that in the comments, it's game over, man. I'm cooked. Cause uh, I'm I'm not about to have that argument. It's just not true. They are. Assault demons. They. <laughs> if you go onto Wikipedia or even just open any type of. You know, like. What is the fucking book? I'm trying to remember the name of it. Something Inferno. It's the name of some guy in his Inferno. Damien? I don't remember. David? I don't fucking care. His Inferno. In that book, I'm 90% sure he talks about the different types of demons and their statuses in the hell that he's created. What fucking book is that called? I've read it twice, but I can't seem to remember what it's fucking called. Again, I should have been in bed hours ago. Anyway. Osmodius doesn't care about Valentino, as long as Valentino doesn't attempt that shit in his bar. Osmodius is not going to kill Valentino. Angel Dust is not going to be able to get out of Valentino's contract unless he convinces Valentino otherwise or to break the contract between them. Which likely won't happen because Valentino's a horrible person. Angel Dust should never have signed his soul away. It doesn't matter how low in the dumps you are, you never sign that shit away because a temporary high will make you more suicidal in the long run 
please never kill yourself. Please do not do drugs. Do not think that has been hotels hell is an accurate depiction of hell. Damien's Inferno. Is that it? No, I don't remember. It's not an accurate depiction of hell at all in the slightest. It is very fictional. It's fictionized. And that's okay. Because it's good entertainment. That's good TV is what Vox would say. <laughs> anyway, stop defending Angel Dust as if he's the good guy or as if he's a victim. He's not a victim. He's literally, his entire arc is about growing through the problems that his past self made or like the 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 things the bad things that his past self made that's literally a massive part of his entire character arc do not step to me and say some shit like that's not his character arc at all when it clearly fucking is anyone who's got it in their head that his character arc is going to be killing valentino is fucking probably wild okay i said that wrong not killing valentino um killing himself his character arc is not killing himself it's no longer about killing himself slowly quickly it doesn't matter it's no longer about doing drugs it's no longer about um drinking alcohol it's no longer about the sex it's about growing past his past mistakes the people who say that that's not his arc do not interact with me okay i cannot handle you i cannot handle you you piss me off i will not be happy because it's ridiculous that's literally his arc people baby him say he's a victim he's not the whole point of his arc is that he isn't a victim he is someone who is growing past his mistakes we can have that representation in our media. Anyone who says that oh, he's just a victim is preventing actual victims from, again, this is their game, this is their logic. In their own logic, saying that he's a victim would be preventing actual victims from growing past their past mistakes. Shut up. Thank you. And good night. I'm going to try and get some sleep. I have horrible insomnia. I'm not going to be able to sleep at all tonight. I'm going to go drink some water. Stay hydrated, people. Do not end your life. Do not do it, please. People love you. There are places that can help you. There are hotlines you can call. Please do not turn to drugs. Do not murder people. Hell is not fun. Okay, it's not quirky. It might be cool for a little while, but obviously it's not quirky. Um, and I'm not, I'm not saying like, oh, hell is bad and heaven is good. I'm saying that we don't know. In the Bible, in literally every Bible you pick up, heaven is good and hell is bad, except for like the Satanist Bible. Okay, that's just what the Bibles are saying. And this story is based off of religion loosely it's based off of some uh mythology in theology so it's a little hard to keep up with but in this story heaven is good hell is bad except hell want to be good heaven is kind of bad it's yin and yang people don't seem to understand that um don't kill yourself don't turn to drugs uh stick it to the man don't let people abuse you. Stand up for yourself. You are more than what other people tell you you are. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. If you like Angel Dust, hell yeah. If you like Valentino, hell yeah. You like Vox, hell yeah. You like Alistair, hell yeah. Do you know why? Because it's a fucking opinion on a fictional character. And it does not hurt me. It, it can't hurt anybody. If that's what you like, you go ahead and like that. But yeah, anyway, I gotta get to bed. Uh, take care of yourselves, please, all of you. Anybody who's made it to the end of this video, I do actually care about you guys. And as much as I say, oh my god, I fucking hate you guys. It's, it's that section of the fandom that doesn't realize that Angel Dust is about growing past mistakes and not just sitting on his ass and being a victim. It's those people who refuse to listen they sit in their echo chamber i don't like those people but you 
if you can give me a good reason and have a genuine conversation about this and talk to me, you know, I still care about you. But those people, I don't, I don't really care about as much, but I still don't want them to hurt themselves, obviously. <sighs> it's a mess. This show is a mess. This is why you need one big plotline. You cannot build a story off of little details or you get a mess. And this show is a mess. As much as I love the music and all of that, it's still a mess. Um, all right. I love you guys. I hate you guys. Stay cool. Whatever. I'm going to bed. Sleep good. Drink water. Shower. Brush your teeth. Don't forget to brush your teeth. I've been lacking on that too, guys. Come on. And sleep good. Remember, it's getting hotter. For those of you, summer is coming around. Stay cool. For those of you, winter coming around. Stay warm. Finally, good night. Dear God.